Hey YouTube, it's Pump. Today I'll be going over every achievement from Glory of the Avarice Raider. My group did this achievement on normal with around 10 people. Uh, our comp was 2 tanks, 2 healers, and 6 DPS, and we had quite a few alts in there, so it's not very hard to do even if you're like right at normal eye level. There are no specific class requirements, but it's very nice to have demon hunters, priests, and evokers. Uh, there are no difficult achievements except for Rashok. Rashok will be the one you spend the most time on for sure. So the first achievement up is called Cosplate from Kazara. Uh, this is the only boss I don't have footage on, but it's really easy to explain. So all you do is when you walk into Kazara's room over here on the right, it's in the lava, there'll be a little shield plating icon you can click. Uh, it'll put a little dot on you that your healers have to heal through. It'll be about right here where I'm hovering. And then you walk out. And it'll do a little bit of damage over time. And then once everyone has this debuff, you pull the boss and wait until she does her frontal. And when she does her frontal beam, you want to get hit by it for just about a second. And then you immediately get out. And that breaks your shield icon. And then you'll have cosplay done after you kill the boss. Uh, it is a personal achievement. So if somebody dies after or before they break their plating, uh, they won't get it. But the rest of the people will get it. Now on to Amalgamation. Amalgamation is very simple and straightforward. So all you're going to do is have this vial get hit by three specific abilities, one for each phase. So here come the Shadow Bombs. The Shadow Bomb is one of them. So you need to just have one of your Shadow Bombs go on top of this little tank. You can see it. the tank changes visually when you hit it, so you know you can move forward. Uh, the second ability from the first phase is the Fire Tank Soak. So your tank then needs to pull it on top of the little tank and then it'll change again visually so you can see me i block soak here it's unnecessary but you can see now it's all shadowy and red and then we just need to phase it to the next phase so i'm gonna skip forward a little bit here and then after that all you need to do is put the bomb from the second phase on top of it and that'll actually explode the vial and then you just kill the ad that comes from it and it's really that simple So you hear me getting the bomb, blink on top of it, and I blow it up, and then a little ad comes out, and then we just all blow up the ad, and then after the ad's dead, you're safe to kill the boss. Moving on to experiments, so just before the boss room you want to click on this little tank and activate this little NPC for Tabula Rasa. Uh, this one's also straightforward and I thought this one was pretty fun actually. So you have to have this little NPC get hit by three abilities from each one of the experiments. So in phase one you're just looking for the bleed. Uh, I'm going to skip around quite a bit through this video because once I show it once you know what to do. So you're waiting for the bleeds to go out, and I highly suggest marking the NPC so you never lose him. So at the start, you're waiting for bleeds to go out, and you can hit him twice in one go. So you don't necessarily have to wait for three sets of bleeds, but it is pretty hard to hit him. So track him as best you can. His movement is random, so you just mark him, stack on him as best you can, and hit him with the bleed three times. And if you click on him, you can track his debuffs. So you can see, like, in my top left, I'm tracking him. But once it gets to three stacks, then you kill the first experiment, and you're on to the second guy. The second guy is the easiest of all three of them. Uh, all you need to do is just be near him, be near the uh, whatever his name is. And when he does his little spew, uh, he'll get a stack for each spew he eats. But I think he is locked to only getting one per... Per volatile spew so you are kind of time gated and have to wait for three volatile spews to go out but here you can see he gets a stack sitting in this corner and yeah so we're going to skip forward you just do that three times until he's got three stacks of the spew and then you're on to the last phase which is probably the hardest phase because uh he can dodge deep breath if the little npc guy is going crazy but 
So you can see right here, we hit him with one deep breath here. Bam. And it is possible to hit him twice in one go. So you can save a cycle of deep breath, but I just fast forward through this. So you just have to hit him three times with deep breath, three times with the volatile spew, and three times with bleeds. Just make sure you track his debuff so you don't accidentally do it without getting the actual achievement. Moving on to Assault. So on pull on this boss, you want to split your raid into two groups, one left side and one right side. Uh, you want to, on pull, do no damage to the boss. Uh, it is actually pretty important to do no damage because you're inevitably going to cleave it down. And you want the adds to live for as long as possible so you can ensure that you get the achievement. So the whole goal of this is to get boulders from the adds, just like you would normally, but instead of throwing them down to kill adds during the fight, you want to get hit by the frontal here and crack the pebble. After that, then I pull boss over to or well, I, I walk over to the edge and I start looking for my specific ad so there are six things that you need to throw these pebbles at three on the left three on the right so there is some coordination here so I throw mine at the elephant and then as you can see it turns white on the actual achievement so you can track this achievement fully highly suggest tracking it and communicating with your uh, little achievement group who's throwing it what so you don't accidentally overlap throws so Again, there's three on the left side, and there's three on the right side. Um, before you actually pull the boss, you can look down and see them. So if that helps your group, you can definitely mark those specific ads to speed up the process, but they're not too hard to find. Um, the beetle, I think, was the most annoying one on the right-hand side. I think he was at the very bottom on the right-hand side, but you'll be able to find him easily enough when you're in raid. Okay, so now we're on to Rashok. This is the hardest achievement in the raid by far, and it is purely frustrating because it's it feels pretty RNG when you're actually in here, whether or not you can hit the leap or not. So it's RNG because the frog leaps a range of distances, and if he messes up his timer, he can jump during Rashok's leap, and you miss it no matter what you do. So yeah. I'm going to do my best to explain the best way we went about it. So we found that the best way to get some consistency on getting at least the first leap was to pull the boss just before the frog is jumping. So just about before he's going to jump, you leap and then you can, well, you pull boss and then you can get the first leap pretty consistently. So I'm going to let this fight play out longer than the other ones. I'm not going to speed it up because I want to try and explain the thought process. So we're running one evoker to try and rescue a low mobility class like our, our shadow priest because it felt like the shadow priest got chosen every single time. So we have a leap coming up in three. We're all just looking at where the frog is. We're all like <laughs> hugging where the frog is and you can, we know he's about to jump here. He jumps and our demon hunter barely misses it. But it's still not bricked yet. We just missed one so far. It's okay. So as you can see, that's why you really want high mobility classes is because even even then you can still get screwed by where the frog jumps. Um, you can only do so much and it's pretty RNG, but again, this is the worst achievement. Once you get through this, you're, the glory achievement's pretty much done in my book. So our leap's coming up. We look where it's at. Goes to our Shadow Priest. The Evoker Rescue, bam! The Evoker hits the rescue, okay. Oh, we were all popping off there. Uh, it was happy to see uh, the Evoker pop off. So then you're in your mission. So you can see the frogs at 60% health, I believe. I, I haven't targeted the frog, but I think he's been hit twice. So we need to hit him three more times, and we just got through first intermission. So you could miss three-ish times until the first intermission. We have to pull him in the middle, and then... After that, you're kind of screwed, and then you'll run out of- you'll simply not have enough jumps to kill the frog. So we have a leap coming up. This is the fifth leap. Goes on the demon hunter. He's gonna jump again. He jumps, and he hits him, thankfully. So now the frog, you can see he was at 40% health, so we just need to hit two more leaps. Uh, <laughs> I'll be honest, this took my group about an hour and a half of actually being in here and figuring out 
how to manipulate this frog. And when at the time we did it, there was like no information about this, <laughs> this stupid encounter. So it was really frustrating to say the least. And if you asked most of my guild, they would all say that they hate this shit. So <laughs> thankfully we all stuck it out and got it done. So we have the another leap coming up. Hopefully we don't get screwed by timing. Uh, he just landed. Three, two, one. Thankfully he doesn't jump again. So he could have leapt there and could have just... We could have been screwed no matter what. Which is the most frustrating part about this is if the timing can just be messed up where it was impossible to hit the frog no matter what you did. So that's the only frustrating part. But still pretty fun. We just need to hit one more leap. Thankfully goes on our Demon Hunter who double fell rushes. And bam. That should, should be a dead frog. And it is indeed a dead frog. And then we're able to kill the boss. I'll now speed it up. I just wanted to fully walk through that because it is extremely frustrating. And I understand your frustration when you do this. Uh, I wish you the best of luck, and hopefully you don't spend an hour and a half in here like I did. Now we're on to Ziskarn. So you want to grab a buddy and go just before the boss room, and there's this little egg on the table you can click. And you need to have the buddy catch the egg. And once you grab this egg, you cannot stop running. Uh, if you have walk bound, you can slow yourself down by toggling walk. Uh, it's a good little, little way to slow down your speed. But you do need to keep this egg alive the entire fight. So the more people, the better for this, just because there's more people to catch it. Less likely chance you're going to miss it. Uh, you do get a debuff when you have to transfer the egg, and you can't catch it again for, I think it's 100 seconds. So you do have to have a moderate group size, but we again, we did it in a group size of 10. So as long as you got at least 10 people, you're good to go. So once this debuff expires, you throw the egg no matter what, but... During the actual fight, you throw the egg when you get knocked back from the actual boss. And that is what's going to cue you having to communicate with your team that, hey, someone needs to catch the egg. So I catch this first egg, thankfully. So you can see me. Uh, I stand on top of it and I catch the egg. And now you can see me awkwardly trying to do damage <laughs> while <laughs> carrying the egg. So I'm just constantly watching my boss timers to see when the next knockback is. Uh, you can hold the egg for an entire minute, but it's gonna be the knockback that actually expires the egg. So I'm just trotting around, jumping around, and then in five seconds, it's gonna get knocked back. Well, we're gonna get knocked back. And so I put myself to the edge, and just as the knockback's gonna happen, I point myself towards middle as best I can, and then I have a teammate catch it, so. If you could put yourself in a clear open area as best you can before the knockback's going to happen, that's the best chance to have your teammate catch the egg. And then after that, it is just rinse and repeat the same thing and kill the boss as fast as possible because it is still a DPS check. Uh, you don't want to drop the egg. Uh, obviously, you need the egg alive for the achievement. So, yeah. Uh, pretty fun achievement, actually. Uh, in a large group size, this is definitely going to be fun. Uh, or if you're just able to absolutely crank the boss this is a joke of an achievement now we are on to magmarax so look at where my character is facing here uh this is really important because there is one snail in this lava that does not load if you're on this platform you actually have to go out really far and then you can see it load in once you get out that far uh, it's really frustrating when we were doing this without much information about it because uh there was conflicting information online but just look at where my mark is in the video and have your most mobile class go out there and get that snail first when you pull boss. So we have a demon hunter go out there and then we grip him back. Um, you want to get the furthest away snails first for this achievement. Uh, it does slowly buff up Magmarax's damage over time the more snails he eats. So if your healing is low, definitely look to get the furthest away ones first. Um, other than that, it is a very straightforward achievement. There's 20 snails in the lava. You just have to find all 20. The only hard one to find is this one that is way out here at Green Triangle. See, my Demon Hunter goes way out there immediately. I just grab this close one. They're, the snails are really easy to see in lava. Um, the first 19 are all easy to see. 
It is just that one way out there that my Demon Hunter just got at Green Triangle that is frustrating. Uh, again, it does not load properly if you're on this platform. You can see it for a split second right as you pull boss, and then it disappears. So if you don't see it, you're boned unless you go way out there, to, and then you can see it. But other than that, you will be easy day. So all you do is you feed it to 20, and then you just kill the boss. Uh, the snails are spread pretty evenly around the boss. Uh, nothing really special about it after you just get that one really far one. Now we're on to Echo Dotharian. This is the second to last one. We're almost done. So this is objects in transit. You just have to go grab four items from throughout the raid. Uh, there'll be a map that I show on screen, but you just have to break these items against the wall and it is 100% a tank mechanic. Just assign your tanks uh, the two items and put down two markers. Put down two of the items on two markers and have your tanks hold the other two. Once you pick up these items, you never have to pick them up again, but here is the map. Uh, they're labeled one through four. Just open up the map and go grab these. Uh, number four is through that entrance way on the right hand side once you go through. So here we are in the actual raid. Uh, we put down two markers and we had items on top of those markers. So we assigned tanks to do everything here. Uh, we have two tanks holding items and then two items actually on the ground. So we did two breaks in the first sector and two breaks in the next sector, I believe. So instead of having your DPS do it, we just thought that having your tanks do it is just easier. So because they get it every time guaranteed. So it just makes more sense to have the guaranteed person do it. So here's our first one breaking. It's going on the tank. Right as this knockback happens, there he goes through. And that's the first break. And as you can see, I have a little bleed on me now. It's doing, I think it's 20-ish K a second, 640K a second, something like that. So it does actually hurt. Your healers actually do have to heal now, even on normal, surprisingly. It does do a solid amount of damage. So once you break all of them though, nothing else happens in the fight, so it's just, you have to survive the little bit of damage it does. Uh, I am tracking this, and once you've broken all four of the items, the achievement does turn white, meaning you can kill Nartharian, and then you get the achievement. So I do suggest tracking it for that reason, just in case you have like a weird bug happen or something, or maybe you didn't break an item or get locked out of the item, something like that. But as long as you put down the items in an order that makes sense and have your tanks break them, you'll be chilling. Uh, definitely pop defensives though when you're breaking them because it does do like 60k a tick or something on, on normal, so it hurts. But yeah, that's the entire achievement and good luck. So now we're on to Sarkareth. This is the last part. Uh, Sarkareth is pretty relaxing. Uh, it's just making it through phase one that's hard. So you want to sit in the infinity pool well, whatever you want to call it, before Sarkareth until you get 10 stacks of this little debuff, and then it turns into a debuff that lasts during the fight until we get to the Phase 1 intermission. So I'm speeding through this fight a lot. Um, if you don't know Sarkareth, you got to get hit by one ability before the intermission happens, uh, and then you're good to go. Uh, you do have 30% less health during this time from the debuff, so you have to definitely make sure to pop a defensive during this glittering surge when it's happening. So once you're about to get sent downstairs, so as you can see, we are getting sent down. You just want to go to the edge and then you'll get an extra action button. So I walk to the edge and I get a little extra action button and I throw it off and I no longer have a debuff. And now all you have to do is just kill Sarkareth just as you do normally. That is literally the entire achievement. Uh, it's all front-loaded. It's just doing phase one with 30% lower HP, essentially. But that'll do it for this video. Uh, I'm going to throw on my bloopers from my Rashok because some pretty funny things happened during our Rashok frog prog. So yeah, that'll do it for this video. Uh, if you enjoy this type of content, please subscribe to my channel. Uh, I do a lot of guides for everything World of Warcraft and Especially if you like Fire Mage, uh, then I'm right up your alley. Enjoy the bloopers, and I'll catch you in the next video. Mm, it's far, but I think you beat more time.
it, it, it's it's just straight up I, I scary bro you are the worst evoker I've ever seen so, so. oh my god we couldn't I put anyone older on evoker <laughs> Dude, the reaction time was like the meme of the grandma getting scared and throwing the milk.